Hey everyone! In this lecture, we are going to approach some of the religious considerations that you need to be aware of as a nurse. Welcome to CAS RN, where I teach you about all things nursing. First off, we're going to go through a few different types of Christianity. We'll discuss Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, and Hinduism. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer here, there's a lot of information and we're not going to cover all parts of that information in this lecture. We're also not going to cover all religions in this lecture. So I have linked a PDF, a website below with a bunch of PDFs that go into each individual religion and a lot of healthcare considerations that you may need to be aware of. If you are interested in learning that, feel free to click on, click on that link below. However, this will just be a rough overview of some of those religions that you might run into as a nurse. Religion plays a big role in healthcare. So the biggest takeaway that I want you to get from here is how much religion affects healthcare choices. Having a belief in a higher power is very important to a lot of individuals. So make sure that you as a nurse are being considerate of that and giving people time and space to be able to make those decisions in a way that they feel the most peace. We're going to start here with the Catholic religion. The Catholic teaching here is that personal conscience is very important when it comes to health care. Health is holistic in that there needs to be a whole broad perspective in looking at this, maybe not just the physical, but also the mental and spiritual and personal relationships. Suffering has meaning. So some individuals who are Catholic may recognize that there is something that can be learned through the suffering, or maybe that they feel like that they need to suffer to atone for previous sins. Death is the next step to be with God. They do not recommend contraception or sterilization, nor abortion. They also feel that suicide, assisted suicide, and euthanasia are sins and should be forbidden. And infant baptism is really important in order, in order to save the soul. Therefore, um, depending on if you're working in an OB unit, you may need to be aware that um, that may, may need to be done quickly if that baby's not going to make it very long or the emotional impact that that might have on the new parents. When it comes to fasting or dietary preferences, there is occasional fasting and occasional avoiding of meat based on specific holidays. And end of life care, they have last rites. There are three of these. They are called sacraments. They are the communion, anointing the sick, and reconciliation. These are administered to a Catholic before they pass away and are important for Catholics because these are the final prayers and blessings an individual will receive before going to heaven. An autopsy is okay. And then when it comes to pain medication, it's good to have that, but it should not be so much that the patient is unaware of their passing and what's going on there. So as a nurse, make sure you're being aware of that and you're working with the patient and you know what their plan is if you're working in like a home health or hospice or if the patient's actively passing. When it comes to nursing interventions, always practice good, interve good communication, be understanding of the personal beliefs, and understand, again, that religion plays a big role in healthcare choices. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has also been known as Mormon for one of their books of scripture called the Book of Mormon. However, they do prefer the name as Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The belief systems here in the teachings are that science and religion all have truth uh, based in God's truth. Moral agency is really important and the individual gets to choose on in their medical choices. The church doesn't weigh in on a lot of those choices. Contraception is a personal choice between spouses. They are, however, against abortion. There are some exceptions, such in, as in cases of rape, incest, or when the health of the mother is in serious jeopardy. Death is the next step in the eternal growth and the eternal progression. And suicide is frowned upon. However, there are recognitions for mental health and what that may have caused in the suicide. And then they do teach priesthood blessings, which can be seen as a comfort and a help of healing. Then when it comes to dietary preferences, they're, they do not participate with tobacco, alcohol, coffee, tea, or illegal drugs. And on the first Sunday of every month, they do practice fasting. However, this is not recommended for individuals who are sick or for children or pregnant women. So uh, there will probably be exceptions 
as far as nursing goes. End of life care, there are no specific rights and autopsies are seen as fine. When it comes to nursing interventions, just make sure that you're practicing informed consent as we should always be doing, uh, but because that helps the individual make those choices based on best information that they have and allow for privacy for prayers, reflection, and any priesthood blessings. With the Protestant religion, the beliefs here could be the illness may be caused by personal actions. They also have a firm belief in the Holy Communion. Dietary preferences, there are no specific teachings on this, and this is an individual thing. End of life care is that autopsy is okay as well as organ and tissue donation. When it comes to nursing interventions, just make sure you're practicing good practices in that you're allowing for privacy as needed. And most people who are Protestant are receptive to today's medical practices. But again, this is generalized. Make sure you're treating an individual. Jehovah Witness do not celebrate traditional holidays like Christmas and birthdays. They don't participate in nationalistic ceremonies like saying the Pledge of Allegiance. They do not receive blood products and they also do not approve abortion. When it comes to dietary preferences, they do not have bloody foods. However, um, foods can be prepared in order to get rid of that. And then they also recommend avoiding drunkenness, but there is no specific teachings on avoiding any kind of alcohol. When it comes to end of life care, they do not want autopsies if at all possible. However, in cases of um, being required by law, then they will comply. And there are also no specific rights. So when it comes to a nurse, make sure that you're watching for blood infusions and treatment. Make sure you can maybe look for some of those bloodless options. I'm not going to go into all the different bloodless options, but again, that uh, website that I've linked below has a lot of different options that you can look in if you're interested in knowing that if you live in an area where Jehovah Witnesses are common. Um, hemodialysis and organ donation are kind of a borderline and individual way of looking at things because uh, blood can be removed from the body in a closed system and then returned to the body. So things like dialysis might be okay. So again, just talk with your patient, figure out what their preferences are, and then help facilitate that as much as possible. Seventh-day Adventists preach individual freedom in making choices. Contraception's okay. Organ and tissue donation is also okay. And pain does not atone for sins. So their perspective on pain and pain management is different. Dietary preferences are to avoid any unclean foods as listed in the Bible. They avoid coffee, tea, alcohol, and any stimulating agents, and they promote a vegetarian diet. When it comes to end-of-life care, you want to make sure that you're treating those with dignity uh, that are dying. And an autopsy is okay. They also do not have any last rites. So when, again, nursing interventions here are going to be pretty basic, making sure that you're treating those patients with dignity and respect and being aware of how their religion may affect their choices. Islam or Muslim, their belief system comes from the Quran, which is their scripture. Healing comes from faith in God. They do participate in multiple daily prayers. The abortion is only to save the life of the mother. When a newborn infant is first born, it's very customary for an Islamic prayer to be said in the infant's right ear. They practice circumcision. Organ donation is okay, and they preach against suicide. When it comes to dietary preferences, they practice one called Muslim halal, which is no pork products and no alcohol. And then once a year during Ramadan, they practice regular fasting. When it comes to end of life care, they prefer to have no autopsy and prefer a quick burial. And before burial, the body needs to be washed and shrouded according to their belief system. When it comes to nursing, make sure that you are respecting the modesty and privacy because some women do prefer full body coverage. Make sure you're limiting your eye contact and not touching while talking. Then if at all possible, provide a same sex caregiver. In Judaism, their scriptural belief is the Torah. They preach against suicide and euthanasia. They also preach to live in a community where a physician is available. So this makes them open to uh, receiving health care. Abortion is only to protect the life of the mother. Circumcision is practiced and they have significant Sabbath day restrictions, such as not using electricity and preparing very simple meals. Organ donation is considered okay. Their dietary preferences are kosher, which also means proper preparation. 
This needs to be kosher certified if you're going to have food brought in that's kosher, um, that's not prepared by the individual or the family. Making sure, and um, for something to be kosher certified, it would have been observed by um, a priest or a rabbi or someone in the religion to make sure that all of the preparation was done properly. They also do not eat pork and they do not have meat and dairy at the same time. And then during Passover, which is around Easter time uh, in the Christian calendar, they have specific re- uh, dietary restrictions when it comes to the bread. End of life care is no autopsy if that's avoidable. They prefer a quick burial as well and body should be accompanied at all times. So that means with your nursing interventions, you need allow need to allow for the body to have someone with it at all times. Uh, if you can, same gender nurses, great, if at all possible. On the Sabbath, if they're not allowed to use electricity or choose not to use electricity, then make sure that you're being aware of that as a nurse and may need help and they may need help you to move their bed for them or turn off the lights. They may want to make sure that there's no music or that there's no TV, anything like that. So it might take a little bit of extra consideration from you as the nurse. And then any blood that's removed from the body needs to be buried with the body. So you might need to look at any kind of bandages or IVs, anything like that may need to go with the body or you might just simply need to leave those things in the body uh, when the body is taken to the morgue. So consult with the patient's family on their preferences with that and what they would prefer. Buddhism has a belief in reincarnation and they teach karma and that your deeds and actions have an impact on your life. Blood transfusions are okay, organ transplants are okay, and contraception is okay. Their dietary preferences are that they might be vegetarian. However, not everyone who is Buddhist is vegetarian. And when it comes to end-of-life care, this is going to vary based on the denomination. Uh, Again, that that same link down below will go into each of those individual denominations and their preferences. When it comes, again, to nursing interventions, just like everybody else, treat people with respect and autonomy and... uh, provide spiritual care based on the denomination and their preferences. Hindu also believe in the samsara and karma. They also have arati and puja, which is a form of worship and usually is performed in front of an image of some sort, maybe an altar with an image of a deity. So making sure to allow time and space for that worship, if at all possible. Obviously, in a hospital setting, we don't allow open flame, uh, but doing our best to accommodate that in a different way. In the Hindu religion, body is seen as the vehicle for the soul to find God. So this is where the reincarnation comes in, that when that individual passes away, their soul may find another body and continue the cycle until they're able to ultimately end in front of God. They preach against suicide however, and abortion, and then blood and organ donation are seen as okay. When it comes to dietary preferences, most are vegetarian and they do not, if they're not vegetarian, they do not eat any kind of beef products. So be aware that something like that might be in jello and they do practice regular fasting. If in end of life care, autopsy is okay and they're more accepting of a natural death. So they may not be interested in some of the uh, life prolonging things that we see in Western medicine, such as uh, ventilators and then cremation should be done within 24 hours. When it comes to nursing, make sure that you're being respectful of modesty and privacy. And there is a belief that Western medicine is too aggressive. So some people may want to take a less aggressive form when it comes to treatment. It is customary to remove your shoes when walking into someone's house. And so you may see individuals taking off their shoes before walking into a hospital room. Jewelry may also have some significance, such as in Western culture, with a wedding ring and what that means. Uh, There may be necklaces, toe rings, bracelets or anklets or anything like that that have significance there. As well as for women who are married, they do have a red dot that they wear on their foreheads and that may be of consideration as well. 
So quick review, I know that that's a really quick video. We didn't go into too much detail, but the big thing here is to treat religion as sacred for individuals, understanding that their choices are heavily influenced by their beliefs and helping patients find peace inside that belief system. What I've seen myself as a nurse in the different religions is that the diet is the biggest thing and the biggest complaint for a lot of people and that they have a strong belief that, that they need to do that to protect their physical health. So you may run into that. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and follow below and add any comments or interesting experiences that you've had. I would love to hear about them. Thanks for tuning in. Please help me grow my channel by clicking subscribe and follow below. 